three, two, one. Hit it. Experience 24 hours of head to head AWS sessions from around the world. My check one, two. Jaws Pankrishon. 2021. 2021. Up till down. Good morning, Japan. Uh, in this session, we are going to see how we can leverage AWS Cognito Identity Tool. Talking a bit about me, so I am currently pursuing BTEC final year in my college. I am I am working as a serverless developer at Amstack, and I am a community build. I am an AWS community builder and AWS certified developer associate. So what's the today's agenda is? So in this today's agenda, we are going to see first, the point is Cognito identity pool. Then we look upon the architecture flow and understand with an example. Then after that, we are going to integrate auth and unauthenticated feature with React.js. So let's jump into it. So what is Amazon Cognito? So as we, as we can see here, Cognito provides two types of components. One is user pool and another one is manage identity pool. So what is user pool? So in website, if you, if you have visited in any website, you can see there are option of sign up and sign in with username and password. So that you can imagine as a coordinator user pool. What is managed identity pool? So it's basically coordinator trust a social identity provider, like let's say Twitter, Google, or LinkedIn. And after that, we are logging from that social provider. So, why not we use user pool? So the problem is that, let's say there are thousands of websites and users have to log in thousands of websites with username and password. It is for default them to realize the password in thousands of websites. So that's why we provide a much identity pool. So trust any social identities. So here, now I am discussing about the architect flow for the cognitive identity pool. So, so here you can see there is the first option is sign in. After when any user sign in to my app, uh, visit my website and sign into any kind of social product. Federated, federated identity provider means the social identity provider. Let's say here in my case, there are Twitter, Facebook, and user pool can be a social identity provider too. After successful login with the federated identities, it will give us the tokens. That token must be a JWT token, JSON web token, right? After that, in step two, after in step two, then Cognito will verify those tokens, whether it is valid or expired. After in step three, so Cognito, in Cognito, we have attached two roles. One is auth role and another one is unauth role. So in Cognito, we have to configure authenticate role and unauthenticate role. So after that, in let's say in, in my case here, step three, we have authenticate role. So in authenticate role, we have sufficient permission to access our specific resources. And after that, I am after successful login, after verify with a uh, cognitive identity pool when, when verify, the IM will throw the credential tokens, temporary credentials. So what are the temporary credential? It basically is deal with access key, secret key, and session ID. 
Why session ID? Because it's a temporary credential and it can up to valid for 12 hours. We can extend those access keys time with AWS. After step four, when we when the user get back to get when the user get the access key secret key and session ID. So after that, in step five, we can we can use those keys to access our specific resources. Now let's say I am showing an example what what is bookstore flow for our application for our uh, bookstore application. So in this bookstore application, what we can see here, so there is a book, there is an unauthenticated role, and there is an authenticated role. So in unauthenticated role, we are see that there is a book table. I am configuring table in my authentic unauthenticated role, and in authenticated role, here you can see there are some AWS resources. So here, what is my Use case is that I want my user, the public user or guest user, can access my DynamoDB table, fetch my Dynamo table from within the React.js application or front end. So here you can see in our bookstore application in our front end, we are directly calling DynamoDB without any access key, secret key, or session ID. We can directly call, we can directly access these resources within our React.js application. And in Authenticate, you can see there are two endpoints that should be Authenticate, like in, no one other, no one can uh, go to my website and click whatever you can. So what are the items are here there? What is the use case here is that's create book and slash like. So uh, when after login with any kind of social provider, Users have to first log in and then he can like a book. So here you can see that I am using API Gateway and under API Gateway, I am configuring AWS underscore IM. And this tell API Gateway that it should require an access key or secret key. But in case of unauth, you can see DynamoDB table directly access DynamoDB from our React.js application. In that, in that unauthenticated role, we are, don't require any access key or secret key. Right? We can directly call uh, uh, DynamoDB from our React, uh, uh, React.js application or our front end. So here I'm showing, uh, I'm showing the authenticate feature. So there, here I'm showing some of the code that I configured in uh, for our for our authentic our authenticate feature of Cognito Identity Pool. So here you can see this function allow access. It will be called after successful login with any kind of social provider. So here in the login section. So here in, in the login section, here you can see I am configuring two social provider. One is Twitter and another one is Google. So here you can see in case of Twitter, as Twitter needed two type of uh, tokens, one is access key and another one is secret key. So we need kind of this. So we need to separate this from a semicolon. So, and in Google, as Google need only the client ID, so we directly can pass this client ID. But in Twitter, there is a little bit complex because there are two type of access key needed for in case of Twitter. So we separate them with a semicolon. And here we are using in that way, you can see. And after successful login and after verify the cognitive identity will verify these access keys, it will throw us the tokens. So what are the tokens you can see? Session ID, secret access key, and access key. And then I'm storing those access keys in a form of local storage or in a form of cookie you can imagine.
in browser. This is basically configuring social identity provider in with authenticated role in case of with ReactJS. Now, now I am showing the uh, how we can configure how we can pass those tokens in the ReactJS. So those who know ReactJS, it is it is you you guys know that there is no headers particularly for storing those access key, secret key, or session ID, right? So how we can pass those tokens in the form of header with the eat our request so that our API gateway can verify those tokens. And for here, I am using a package called AWS for fetch. It's an NPM package. And here I am configuring in such a way that, as you can see here in line seven, I am using uh, I am using an AWS client and in the, inside that I am using access a resource that AWS resource that is execute API. And you, you, with the help of this execute API, you can imagine it's an API gateway. And as you can see here, this is the URL of the API gateway. And some configuration are there. And after that, from this fetch method, JavaScript fetch method, we are calling this API gateway URL endpoint. And it also uh, have the tokens. So in this way, we are configuring access key, secret key, and session ID and pass it to our headers with our React request. But in case of unauthenticated feature, we're not using any kind of access key, secret key, or session ID. So how we can configure unauthenticated feature within our ReactJS? So here is the code. So as you can see here, I'm directly calling DynoDB for within our ReactJS application without any access keys. One thing to mention that the, un, the unauthenticated role have must have the sufficient permission to call DynamoDB, get operation. So I conclude that we have seen that how we can configure authenticated and unauthenticated feature of cognitive identity pool. And we have seen that there are three layers of restriction that is authentic feature. How is that? What I am telling you is that. So in a typical scenario, we are only using login with Google. After Google verify you, it will throw you the access keys or JWT. And in that, we are storing that JWT in a form of browser for future use. But here in this cognitive identity pool, we are using accessing AWS resources. We have to grant, we have to give granular access to our users to access any kind of resources. For that, we have to do a little bit extra. So first three layer means that first Google will verify you. After that, Cognito will verify you, those access, those other JWT token. And after verify the JWT token, it will again give you the access key, secret key, and session ID. And then the third layer is, and then the third part is that API gateway will verify those access keys again. And then fourth point is that you can directly access any AWS resources with the help of unauthenticated feature of React of crypto identity pool. And also as a time constraint, I am using, I have also done the same thing with SAM the infrastructure as codes or serverless application model. You can, you can visit my GitHub repo. That is, I have written here, GitHub Cognitive Identity Pool, and you can see how I configured SAM template for the same. 
Satish and lastly, answer but rest. lastly but not the least, thank you AWS User Group Japan for providing me the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Yeah, you got me so lost. I love the way.